Hey. Hold on, I didn't mean to decline it. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, just one sec. I, quick question. What? Can I rebuild a zero overall team? Wait, 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 what? Can I rebuild a zero overall team? Yeah. Okay. He heard it here first. All right. So a significant amount of time has passed as I am now back home in New Jersey. We are taking on the challenge of rebuilding a zero overall team. Now RBT obviously gave me his permission for this. You guys just heard the clip. Um, I'm not exactly sure. I didn't see his video, but he rebuilt a zero overall team. And apparently people have been wanting me to do this for a while. So I recorded that clip like well over a month ago. And here we finally are getting into this rebuild challenge with rebuilding a zero overall team. Clearly a zero overall offense, defense, and it's a zero overall. The highest overall player on the team is a 12 overall. Everyone's a 12 overall. It's the lowest overall a player can be. It is the Cleveland Browns and I am excited to get right into this. So I went to RBT's video and I saw it took him until the 2026 season and into the 2027 part to win a Super Bowl. So it took RBT 10 years in Madden franchise to win a Super Bowl. Now again, his link will be in the description if you guys want to check out that video. But it took him 10 years to win a Super Bowl, and hopefully it doesn't take us anywhere near as long as I don't think it will. You know, people have proclaimed, and obviously there is self-proclamation uh, self in there, that I am the best rebuilder to ever exist, at least in the YouTube space, and I kind of started this, so I guess I should be. But in this particular hardest rebuild of all time, we are going to be doing anything. Getting to the Super Bowl and winning by any means necessary. Free agency, trading, signing drafting whatever it is we're going to be doing it we're going to be going super super hard in order to get that done definitely won't take us 10 years unless madden sims being screwy we're gonna have a really good team in a couple of seasons i think uh maybe like three or four at least but um i think we got what it takes in order to win personally i have faith and believe in myself so let's go ahead and simulate i suppose to uh i mean we're not going to sim anyone let's just sim to the playoffs we're not going to sign anyone i should say all right, so it is the postseason. We clearly didn't make it. We went 0-16. Not a huge surprise there. We have literally no one. Um, so why are, why are some of these guys super high overall? Were they signed? They had to have been signed. Yeah, absolutely signed by the CPU, even though I turned that setting off. But it, pretty much everyone's a 12 overall. <laughs> pretty much still. Okay, so wanted to address one thing quickly while we're here. I got a comment while I was doing this, and they said, uh, what'd they say? They said, uh, Bangle, stop putting your ugly ass in the thumbnail. No offense, still love you, bro. What do you mean, no offense? You can't just say no offense and then not to be offensive. It's like, no offense, guy, but I wish you were aborted. Oh, second of all, I gotta say, I slay more than an eight-year-old living on a hill after a fresh snowfall, and I have a number of subscribers who think I'm quite cute. Anyways, <laughs> we, have, we have an absolutely trash team, and uh, I think we can still turn it around. It's going to have to be in the offseason, signing free agents, and we're going to sign like pretty much anyone available to kind of get us some trade pieces and, and a team to deal with in year two, have our rookies play somewhat well. That's going to be a big thing for us. So we do have a number of draft picks. We have two first-round picks, uh, two second-round picks, if I'm not mistaken. So we should be able to draft some significant playmakers on this team. So uh, let's go ahead and go to the free agent period, see who we can sign, and it's going to be a lot of players. So Drew Brees is here. He doesn't fit what I want to do. He's 39. We need to sign youth. So Spencer Ware is most likely going to get a deal, if not for Jeremy Hill. It might be Tariq Cohen either. Actually, Tariq Cohen is, is the move for right now. So my negotiation, my negotiation, what, what the fuck? My negotiations thus far are as follows. Drew Brees, Tariq Cohen, Shaquille Barrett, Jimmy Garoppolo, and Delvin Bro. Now, this was kind of my thought. I don't really want to go out and get players for, you know, massive deals that I'm probably not going to end up having on the team. Um, so what I did with a number of these players was offer one-year deals to them. So Drew Brees, I think Tariq Cohen I gave like five years. But Shaquille Barrett, I offered one year and a ton of money. Um, and same for Jimmy Garoppolo. I think I offered actually a few more years for, for him because he could be like the franchise guy. I want like an actual deal in him so i can have him like the offers are so bad i don't know how to get his up and then delvin bro i offered 
again, one year, but a tremendous amount of money because I can trade those guys, but I won't have to pay their contracts out over more than a year. So hopefully I'm able to sign some of those guys. If I don't get Jimmy G, it's kind of no big deal. I want to get a quarterback anyway. So Shaquille Barrett rejected, but we did get Delvin Bro. We got Drew Brees and we got Jimmy Garoppolo. I offered nothing to him. I also got Tariq Cohen. So if we go ahead and reorder this depth chart, not only do we now have players in place like Drew Brees, I thought would have trade values. So that's why I wanted to get him on a one-year deal. Jimmy Garoppolo is quick development and he's young, so he's going to have trade value. He also could be our quarterback of the future. Tariq Cohen is a decent option at running back. We want to go down that route. And then uh, on defense, we got Delvin Bro. I think that's good trade value. He's an 80 overall at 28 years old. Not great. Not going to be in the long-term plans for me. Uh, but he is a decent option right now. So he's up to an 81 over, or excuse me, yeah, 80, 81 overall. So he's going to be decent trade value um, coming up to the draft. So I think we made the most out of free agency. We still do have some money. It's 13.6 mil. So I might look to sign a guy like Jeremy Hill because I know running backs do have trade value. Tavon Austin, if I can get him for really cheap, I'll do that. Uh, but yeah, I guess other than that, I'll probably see you guys for the draft. We also went out and signed Jarek McKinnon. Um, so he is, again, more trade value. Everyone I'm signing is pretty much to a one-year deal because that's going to offer us uh, the most wiggle room in the years coming down the line. So I also want to, you know, use some of our XP if we got any. We Also, what I should do before we go in is see some of the scores over the past season because, we, you know, you figure we would get absolutely massacred by any team that came up against us. Let me go ahead and see if I can check the, uh, the schedule for you guys. Ah, uh, it was brutal. Uh, <laughs> oh, shit. So we lost 0-84, to 0-211, 0-211, to 0 to and then 0-214 through our preseason games. Did we score a single point? Three points were put up on the Jets, and that's all. We scored three points and got absolutely massacred in every single game. Our closest game <laughs> was to the Vikings. We only lost by 56 and the Bears. Mainly it was losing by 76 or 77. A couple of games where 100 points were put up on us or more, 119, so a couple times. Uh, geez, yeah, that's an 0-16 season if I've ever seen one. Also signed Tavon Austin. Oh, I guess I was moved, he was moved to halfback. I'll probably move him back to wide receiver, although his overall most certainly will go down, I would guess. But he is a decent option at receiver if we want to use him, because uh, we could do that. But we really need to have a sick draft. Yeah, he's a terrible receiver. Oh, boy. <laughs> All right, so we're going into the draft now. We have the first overall pick, of course, and we also have the eighth. So I talked a little bit about earlier how I'm going to do anything possible uh, to get this. We also have the 33rd, the 40th, and one more second round pick is at number 56. So I said I'm going to do anything I can, anything possible in order to get in better shape down the line. So I am not taking this number one overall pick. In fact, I am probably not going to take my first pick until around five or six. I'm going to try to trade back with each individual team accumulating draft picks along the way from the 49ers, Jets, Bucks to the Bengals. And then we're, we're kind of going to reassess where we are. With this first trade, I'm trading the number one overall pick to San Francisco down to their number two. Also picking up in the process a second rounder and their first rounder next year. Now we have the number two overall pick in the draft, clearly. So we're going to go ahead and try to trade with the New York Jets, who own the third pick, and uh, also pick up a two and a one from them. It may not be possible with just what we have now. I might have to throw in... Oh, it should be already be there. It might not be showing up. Yeah, we're going to have to throw in uh, probably... Let's do a six and a seven next year. Hopefully that works. Ooh, it's very close. So this trade is now a 1, a 5, and a 7 to pick up a 1 and a 2, as well as a first-round pick next year from the Jets. And uh, who did I say had the number 4 overall pick? I want to say it was the Bucks. Yeah, it was. So we're going to move down, continue. We're going to be able to pick up less value um, the, you know, the further we move down. But it has to be done. We need these picks. They're so valuable. This trade is going to be the number 3 overall pick, moving back to number 4 picking up a one next year from Tampa Bay. And I said the Bengals had the number five overall pick. So we'll see what we can get from them. A first round pick next year would be fantastic as well. I would settle for that. This trade is going to be the four overall pick, the fourth overall, for the fifth from the Cincinnati Bengals, as well as a first next year and a fourth next year. And now I think I'm about ready to make my first pick. 
Uh, we're going to go ahead and simulate to the number five overall pick, see who goes. I have really no idea who I want. It's kind of weird. I, I like the trading down thing. I know not everyone likes to see trading down, but it needs to be done if we're going to have any future for this team. The more picks, the better this team is going to be. All right, with a very interesting trade now, I'm trading the fifth overall pick back to number 12. Well, I'll just tell you what I'm giving away. I'm giving away the fifth overall pick and then two second rounders this year to acquire the number 12 overall pick, the 21st overall pick, and a second next year from Buffalo. There's no one I really want near the top end, so I figured I would take the pick that I had, and there's no one really in the second round that I'm, I'm too high on either. So I figured I would trade down, pick up two kind of middle of the pack picks, um, and a second rounder next year. I think that was pretty decent value. Um, and hopefully we take some studs with the picks that we do have. With this pick, I'm trading the eighth overall pick to the Chargers for their one, two, and three all next year. Again, I think that drafting is the best way to go about this. So we're getting as many picks next year as possible. And now we're at number 12, where I think I'm going to make my first actual pick in this draft. And that is to take Howard Knight, a cornerback out of Auburn, blazing fast at 4-3-3 in his 40-yard dash. B-plus on press, B-man, B-zone, great top three skills. Here he is. 84 overall quick development. I don't know what I just did. I, that was weird, but he's the number two player in the draft. We took him at number 12, 96 speed, 85 man, 85 zone, 86 press, 94 excel, 90 agility, quick development. We're already out here. Apparently the biggest problem RBT had was he couldn't draft for jack shit. I don't have that problem. My drafts are always sick. Make the most out of it. We're moving on. We're going to take some studs. Okay, my next few moves, because I had a defensive tackle I wanted that went to the Cowboys at 17. My next few moves are going to be very boring, so I'm going to omit them from the video. I'm going to trade away and trade down for basically next year's draft picks, starting out with the Bears. I'll take their pick next year and a fifth this year. So I'm going to trade. I'm going to do this all the way up until the third round. So bear with me. You guys, we're just going to skip right there. So we're in the third round now at pick number one, and Miles Frampton caught my eye. B-plus power move, B-plus hit power, B-tackle, really, really good top three skills, 6'7", 290 out of Nebraska. Here he is, ranked number 23 in the draft. We take him at 65. His low overall, I think, might be reflected in the fact that um, he doesn't fit the scheme. I think we're listed at a, as a 4'3", so he's not really our ideal end. He'll be a much higher overall defensive tackle, but 90 strength, 83 tackle, 79 block shot, 88 power moves with 80 acceleration, 73 speed as well. That's why he's the 23rd best player in this entire class. We're taking him here in the third round. Now I'm going to take Sterling Waddy out of Vanderbilt. Look at his top three skills, B plus man, B zone, B minus press as a late fourth rounder. Now I'm at the number one overall pick in the fourth round right now, and I am taking no chances on losing out on this player. Sterling Waddy. 77 overall quick development look at him ranked number 31 in the class quick development if i didn't mention that 88 speed is fairly low by cornerback standards but 89 man coverage 83 zone 82 press he's a quality cornerback especially 77 overall quick development in the fourth round uh pretty good pick also a lot of these future picks that i am trading down i just traded down back-to-back -back picks here late in the fourth um those are going to be really valuable next year when I can trade those for actual players if I don't want to keep trading down because I know trading down is boring to watch but it's certainly the move as we're going to take here Sanchez Parmalee out of Alabama everyone we're taking in this draft has to be six foot apparently he looks okay so we are going to take him here 71 overall I, he's you know he's better than where we, we took him but you know I didn't really expect him to be amazing and that's the one thing I hate doing is taking players just to take them I should have traded down I knew I should have uh, I did have him watch, so 89 speed, 76 zone, 77 tackle, 82 hit power. He's a developmental player, which I guess is good. He'll be someone to come in and start right away. Uh, nothing special, though. Now, I do have a number of players left in this class that I'd like to take. I have four more on my draft board. I want all of them. Starting off with Kalan Richardson out of Wisconsin. Great top three skills. Decently strong, too. Not as strong as I would have liked, but he's decently strong. He's going to be my first pick, and I only have two more picks remaining, including this one. So I'm going to try and trade back into this draft. Kalan Richardson, though, 343. He is a big boy, and he's an excellent pick. Number 38 in the class. We took him at 161, 76 overall. 83 strength is a bit low, but 83 run block, 77 pass block, and 92 impact blocking is certainly not bad at all. My next pick is going to be Raymond Pettigrew out of Arizona State. Decent enough top three skills, 
We're going to take him. Here he is, 69 overall. It's an excellent pick as he's ranked number 96 in the class. We took him at 188. Again, 3-4 pass rusher. Doesn't fit the scheme at all, so his overall is going to be low. But he has 80 speed, 82 tackle, 75 block shed. 84 power moves is quite good, but his play rec and awareness are going to be quite low, bringing down his overall uh, a lot. But I think this is a very solid player. Obviously, you can tell that he's ranked number 96 in the class. We took him at 188. So he's a top three round guy. I think we got a pretty good value pick on him. With this trade, I'm trading Drew Brees. I know that this seems this is the trade you're trading Drew Brees in. Yes, Drew Brees and a seventh for, well, that's a future seventh, for two seventh round picks from the Jets and a second next year. I think that was the best value we're going to get for Drew Brees. And I think these next two picks are really going to make it worthwhile. Uh, and that second round pick is, again, pretty much the most we'd be able to get for Drew Brees. I had to add in a seven because it was so close to going through, but it wasn't all the way, so... With hopefully maybe my quarterback of the future, Gordon Winslow out of Wyoming. We know another Wyoming quarterback coming to the draft and Josh Allen this year. Maybe that's him, even though they totally don't have the same profile. But a really interesting player. Good enough top three skills and an interesting combine. He's a mobile quarterback with decent speed, 4 6 8, great vertical and broad jump, and 20 yard shuttle. So he's agile. He doesn't really have the throw power, but he's a great seventh round guy 72 overall quick development ranked number 97 in the class we took him at 193 his awareness is really low but 89 throw power which i probably would want to boost to 90 83 throw on the run 83 speed 78 medium accuracy 85 short with 73 deep quick development is going to help out a lot so he's our quarterback of the future um so i mean we're doing okay here and my last pick will be shredrick leach out of pit he looks incredible great top three skills would work really well um with our system very explosive you can tell from the broad jump pretty strong as well here he is shredrick leach excellent pick it says we took him at uh 195 he was number 166 68 overall is low 86 strength 86 tackle 82 block shed uh, is all good i thought he would be a little bit better i thought he'd be in the low 70s um i mean his, his stats don't look terrible but i mean you know not a crazy pick uh it is a seventh round so i mean Whatever. We got a good quarterback. Um, that Trebris trade, I think, was well worth it. And, and we get a second next year. Jimmy Garoppolo is also trade bait, if you if you didn't know. With my next order of business um, as GM of the, ben or, excuse me, the Browns here, we're going to go into free agency and sign some players. We're also going to figure out exactly what kind of scheme we want. Does Miles Garrett have superstar? He does. That might have some trade value, even though he is a 12 overall. Uh, <laughs> we got to figure a bunch of stuff out. With this trade, I am trading Jimmy Garoppolo at two and a three for Odell Beckham Jr. from the New York Giants. I think that's a fairly good trade for us. Uh, that's a very good target for our new quarterback, Gordon Winslow, to throw to, as he is our potential, you know, starter for the long term here. We need him to do really well. The next order of business is getting an offensive line around him, because Kalan Richardson was a good pick, but... There's literally nothing else. So we need to make the most out of this time. Sign a bunch of free agents for these positions. And I think use some of our draft picks to get better. So I was quite active in free agency with signing a number of players. You can see them all here. Uh, didn't really, I didn't sign any receivers. Okay. But defensively, I got my man D-Wash back in the NFL. So that's cool. Uh, didn't do any defensive tackles. I guess I skipped that. Uh, how did I miss positions? Oh, I guess I didn't do the D-line because I drafted some defensive linemen. All right, well, I do have a number of draft picks. If you do not believe me, which you definitely do because you watch me trade away into oblivion uh, for future picks, here we go. These are our draft picks for this coming year. Uh, there are quite a few of them. Well, that's next year. Okay, so I think what the next step is now is uh, trade some of these, these threes away. Uh, and try to get some offensive linemen on the team of some value. This trade is going to be a three, David Bass and Lars Hansen <laughs> for Fars Lamp from the Chargers. So we just bid, did pick up David Bass, but uh, I don't know how Lars Hansen was even on the team. He was just kind of there. But that's a very good offensive lineman to pick up uh, to pair with Kalan Richardson on the offensive line. Might have to play him at tackle. I think we're going to try and play him on the inside for this year. And uh, I think now we're going to try and trade away the running backs. And we might make Tavon Austin a running back again so that he may, may have some trade value. 
Jarek McKinnon, a 1 and a 4, gets me Khalil Mack. The sack attack from the Silver and Black is back in a Madden 18 rebuild. And uh, boy, do I love me some Khalil Mack. He's going to be wreaking havoc on this defense as we're, you know, beginning to assemble the team with some of these picks. As you guys can see now why I wanted so many of these picks that I got. It's so we can go out and get superstar stud players like Khalil Mack. Now we have to figure out what kind of defense we want to play because um, I think Miles Frampton would be a ridiculous defensive tackle. So if we want to run a 4-3, I mean, that's certainly a possibility. If we want to run a 3-4 with him at defensive tackle, that's also certainly a possibility. As he goes up to an 83 overall defensive tackle, as I said that he would go up. Um, so he's great. I think what we want to do is... Uh, we got, man, let's run a 4-3. Let's move Khalil Mack to left end. He should have more than quick development, I'll tell you that much. Let's move Khalil Mack to left end. And really start getting this defense together. Well, the offense is also really bad. I'm going to trade some of our picks. I think our second round picks are going to be turned into, uh, offensive linemen. I need a center. I need two tackles. A second round pick and a fifth round pick gets me Zach Martin of the Cowboys. So, I mean, we're not exactly running out of picks here. I have a number of first round picks I've done absolutely nothing with. So if I can turn like a three and a four, and Zach Martin's going to play tackle, by the way. I'm not sure if I said that. Um, if I can turn that into another tackle, let's see what Jack Conklin's up to. What's Jack Conklin's overall? 82. I want someone else, I think. I'm gonna, I might also just go after a guard and move him because that's just easier. Okay, now I just saw a D Jackson. That's Darius Jackson, former Cowboys running. He actually might still be there. I have no idea. But Darius Jackson's a running back. I don't know why he's playing kicker. So I'm going to go out and sign a kicker, and that's going to be... Let's give Josh Lambeau a shot. I'll say Aldrich Rosas, a Giants kicker. Oh, no, this is the move. Roberto Aguayo He's the move. Puncher. To, uh, give me this rookie Paul Underwood. All right. I also think I'm going to go through the lineup and cut uh, every 12 overall on the team where I wouldn't face a vicious penalty for doing so. So, like, it wouldn't make any sense to cut Elijah Maguire, even though I really want to. But I w it would free negative 40 in cap room, which makes, like, we'd lose 40K and then get a penalty of 120K. So we really can't do that. But a guy like Bilal Powell, we do get an 880K cap penalty next year. Actually, we don't really need to free the space right now. Okay, I'm not going to do that. Never mind. Never mind. A three and a four is going to get me Mike Williams, the former first-round pick out of Clemson. I'm trying to get together an offense so that uh, my rookie quarterback, Gordon Winslow, might have a shot at winning Offensive Rookie of the Year. Tavon Austin is not going to be the good option uh, at wide receiver, so I need to move him to halfback, get trade value for him. I went out and signed a few running backs in free agency as well, which always seem to have yellow trade value with teams. So if I can go ahead and trade some of these running backs, including Tavon Austin, who's an 82 overall, I'm going to keep Tariq Cohen because I think he's a decent option. Uh, and then sign a fullback, maybe. Um, I think we're going to be in business because, I mean, this offense is coming together. I also need a tight end. The offensive line, we're going to deal with that for now. But we need we need a fullback out of free agency. We need a wide receiver. We I'd like another wide receiver, and then I need a tight end. With this trade, I'm trading Rex Burkhead a 7 and a six this year for Gerald Everett of the Los Angeles Rams, former second round draft pick. Crazy upside on him, athletic freak. That's gonna help us out at tight end. And now I need a third wide receiver um, because Tavon Austin was not gonna work. If Tavon Austin has green trade value anywhere, that would be awesome, but I doubt that he's going to. So my next trade that I make is probably going to involve Tavon Austin in some fashion. With this trade, I'm trading Tavon Austin, Jaquiz Rogers, and a third for Devontae Parker. That's going to be a very good wide receiver, which would, I guess, potentially move Mike Williams to the slot. We have no slot receivers on our team, but I guess that's where Mike Williams is going to be lining up. And uh, if there are any decent receiving options in free agency, I'm going to go ahead and, and sign one. Uh, I'll take a... Let me Russell Shepard, I think. He's a bit younger. Uh, Brian Quick... Hmm. Actually... No, I'm going to take Dontrell Inman. Nah, no, I, no, let me take actually Jarius Wright. There we go. Jarius Wright is now onto the team. He's a good fourth receiver. So we've put an offense around our quarterback now, and I think a pretty good one. It's not the best. It's not the worst by any means. 
We have a defensive tackle who's really solid, and I think I think Shredrick Leach could be a pretty good defensive tackle as well. So we're going to go ahead and move him over to defensive tackle and see what his overall ends up being. I think it's kind of it's going to be like low 70s, I would hope. Um, did he just where is he? Go to defensive tackle. It's a 74. All right, I will take that any day of the week. Very very solid. We're building up this defensive line clearly. Actually, you know what? Pettigrew has power moves, so he's actually going to work really well at a as a right end as well. Well, on the defensive line. So Raymond Pettigrew is going to be being is going to be right end for us. That's what he'll be playing, and he goes up to a 72 overall. So the defensive line is actually looking pretty nice. Obviously, the cornerbacks are nice. I also forgot I have Delvin Bro to trade. He will not be playing. Delvin Bro can be traded uh, for a linebacker, I guess. I didn't sign. I need to sign another one of those. Delvin Bro. Also, if I could get, I'm gonna sign two more running backs and try to trade away one of them. Chris Ivory can be our backup, and then Eddie Lacy can be the trade bait. And actually, Damian Williams. Um, can actually be traded as well. He actually might have some value at 26 years old. With this trade, it's going to be Delvin Bro, Damian Williams, and a third round pick for Landon Collins, adding another sick giant to our team. He's going to be playing most likely strong safety for us. And I'm going to move Parmalee over to free safety, where, you know, he has some potential. He's, I don't really see him being in the long term and uh, fit of this team unless he does really well and wins defensive rookie of the year or something, which I hope goes to one of our defensive linemen. I think that'd be pretty awesome. Um, but the team actually, or cornerback, would be nice as well. But I think the team is coming together. It looks not so bad. If I can get, I'm going to sign a middle linebacker and an outside linebacker, and then we're going to get this simulation underway for season two. This is going to be more than a zero win team, which is, is pretty good. So I went ahead and signed Prince Shembo and Sam Barrington. The team is really coming together. I think this is a team that could do some damage. Not, I'm not talking playoffs. Playoffs? You guys ever seen more video? Anyway, I'm not going to get into that. This is a decent team. I wish I could check overall. I think I'd have to jump into a game, which, I mean, I could see what it is. So I'm hoping it's a 23 overall. That's because we have a lot of 12 overalls on our team, I think, <laughs> still. But after simulating, I think we're going to be, uh, be much better. So, oh, actually, that's right. I could trade Chris Ivory. Interesting. With this trade, I'm trading Chris Ivory, Eddie Lacy, and a future four for David DeCastro of the Pittsburgh Steelers. I need to now sign a running back. I've been kind of cheesing free agency a little bit, but, you know, I said any means necessary. Kerwin Williams would work. Any means necessary to get this into a good team. David DeCastro uh, helps me out with that quite a bit, and I can play him at right tackle, which is what I intend to do. So I don't need to play Sebastian Vollmer anymore. David DeCastro moves to right to tackle. And this team is actually looking pretty solid. Hopefully going to win three or four games. <laughs> That's kind of what I'm going for. Not a bad squad. Not good, obviously. But, it, I mean, I've seen worse. I don't know where, but I've seen it. I, maybe. Maybe I have. So this is the team, clearly, for season number two. And we talked about how it may or may not look nice. You be the judge of that. It's obviously pretty trash, just that. I've changed up the schemes and things like that so the players work where they are. I think we're in store for a decent season. I need Gordon Winslow to have a breakout season and just play so well, go off, win Offensive Rookie of the Year, and we're going to be set for the future. So at the midseason mark, Odell is an impending free agent, and we are 1-7. and seven. Already significantly better than we were last year. I guess one win better isn't significant. But we got to bring back Odell. We got to bring back whoever is here, is here. Wow, Zach Martin, Khalil Mack, Landon Collins, and Devontae Parker. Uh, yeah, obviously we want all those guys back. Everyone who's re-signed, which is everyone, by the way, except for Khalil Mack and Devontae Parker, said either, oh, I'm so happy to re-sign and play with such a great team or such a great organization. They said both of those things. Like, this team sucks. What do you mean? It's almost never been a good team, the Browns, but, you know, they're coming back. We got a number of stars, obviously. 399 overalls. Landon Collins is a beast. Devontae Parker could be really good down the line. So we're definitely getting there. So clearly we wouldn't have made uh, the playoffs. We went 3-12-1. So yeah, much better than last year. I didn't even bother showing the stats, by the way, last year because I knew they would be insignificant. Gordon Winslow, not a bad rookie season. 
Nearly 4,300 yards, 31 touchdowns, 18 picks, rushing Tariq Cohen. Wow. Uh, 1,101 yard rushing yards, 11 touchdowns. That's a lot of ones there for Tariq Cohen. Receiving Odell went off almost 100 catches for 1,400 yards, 7 TDs. Gerald Everett had 9 touchdowns, 8 touchdowns for Mike Williams, 3 for Devontae Parker on 900 yards. Blocking, how'd the offensive line hold up? Pretty well. He did well. Defensively, Daryl Washington led our team in tackles with 157. Tackles for loss, 21 from Khalil Mack, who also picked up eight sacks along the way. Nine and a half for rookie Raymond Pettigrew led the team. Shredrick Leach and Miles Frampton had three and a half and three respectively. Interceptions, five for Lennon Collins, four for Sterling Waddy, four for Howard Knight. The rookies played very, very well on the outside there. Forced fumbles, we have three from Lennon Collins led the team. Fumble recoveries, two from Lennon Collins. Any defensive touchdowns? No, but players are starting to make plays. All I'm looking for is a rookie of the year. If Dak Prescott wins MVP of the 7-9 and nine Cowboys, okay. Show me AFC Office Player of the Year. It is Tom Brady. Defensive Player of the Year is Justin Houston. So far, I've seen no Browns in here. Show me Offensive Rookie of the Year Browns. It is Gordon Winslow. That is huge for XP as far as that goes. Show me Defensive Rookie of the Year. It's another Brown. It's Sterling Waddy. Interesting. Howard Knight finished in second. Raymond Pettigrew at third. Miles Frampton at fourth. Sanchez Parmalee at sixth. And then Shredrick Leach at nine. Is that one, two, three? Wait, hold on. How many are out? One, two, and then we had four. Six players in the top ten for Rookie of the Year defensively. That is a rookie class coming to play. XP, I was hoping it'd be more than 41K. That's still a really good amount, though. Also wanted Kalan Richardson to have more. Maybe they're going to get like an end of the season upgrade. I'm not really sure. We're going to go ahead and simulate to the offseason. And uh, I'm excited the way the boys played this year. Year two has been, I think, an overwhelming success, despite obviously a very poor record. But we're moving in the right direction. That's the most important thing. We've accumulated the awards and the accolades um, that are going to help with XP and upgrading and progressing players. So I have high hopes heading into season three, as uh, we're not going to re-sign anyone in this bunch just absolutely no one actually wrong walter turner was a guy signed out of free agency 22 years old 73 overall as an undrafted rookie let's give him a deal he is the only one we're bringing back though the rest can walk how many 12 overalls do we have they're not even showing up that's fine here is the adjusted xp uh who did i start at center i have no idea uh, oh, I think it was John Greco. So we're looking for a center in the draft. But there's the XP on offense, XP on defense. Who won rookie of the year? Serlin Wadi, 46K for him. Why are you playing down? Why Is it confidence? Yeah, it's confidence. That kind of sucks. Um, but a decent amount of XP for everyone. Not who, <laughs> not 12 overall. We're going to look to make some upgrades, and then we're going to assess what we need to look for in free agency. I mean, we kind of already know, but... Vic Beasley doesn't fit what we want to do at all. Mike Evans would. Mike Evans would be a great receiver um, to pair with the current guys that we have. Also, left tackle Reynolds. Was he a rookie last year? Why are you in free agency? Please. I will play someone else at center. Let me offer you a max contract. All right, we have no money. We have no money to do anything because of these guys um, and our team that are getting paid money to do nothing. We need... What's the lowest penalty? We're going to go through. We're going to cut... Did we even have 12 overall showing? Yeah, like that's the problem. The cap penalty is so much on some of these players that we can't really cut them. If I can figure out a way to trade them though, then we'd be talking, but the penalty is so much. So if I can figure out a way to trade Miles Garrett and uh, Joel Batonio, I mean, we'd be in business. I think I said Joel Batonio, but I was thinking Kevin Zeitler. Um, so if I could get that going and trade a future fifth, I'll take a 7th for this cap dump. Give me a future 7th. All right, golden. Okay, so that was accepted. We should have a little bit more money to play around with now. All right, we do, but like we can't use it right now because it didn't register. Uh, that really sucks. Next week, we're going to be able to get it. Obviously, Mike Evans declined. I don't know if you guys saw the offer, but it was really bad. But we did get Reynolds, that offensive lineman. So he can now play right guard, and I'm going to move Kalan Richardson, I think, to center. Actually, he can play right tackle. I'm going to move David DeCastro back to right guard. And um, 
then still Kalan Richardson is center. Like now we have more available cap room, but I mean, obviously it didn't register when we needed it to. But I think we got the better player anyway. Not better, but like Mike Evans. Mike Evans is obviously better, but better for us because we already had three good wide receivers. I'm now actually finally going to spend some of this XP. I think that will be the best for us right now. So here we are in the draft. We have too many first round picks to count, including the first three. We have, what is that, five inside the top 10? 13th, 17th, 18th, 24th. Uh, and I plan on probably trading a lot of these away. But my first pick may surprise a few of you. It's going to be Brian Borland, a QB out of USC. Now, granted, USC quarterbacks don't necessarily work out usually in the NFL, I guess, uh, besides Carson Palmer. But Brian Borland is debatably the best player I've ever seen. A plus throw power, B plus throw accuracy short, B plus throw accuracy mid. So much so that I'm going to draft him over my quarterback that I drafted in the seventh round. He was playing so well. Brian Borland had to, had to. 85 overall, superstar development. He's ranked number one in the class. We drafted him at number one. I had to. 84 deep accuracy, 87 mid, 87 short, 96 throw power, 82 throw on the run, 80 speed. We just took Aaron Rodgers. He's 21 years old. He's a beast. He's so good. I had to. 86 agility, 80. Who is this? This is not a fair player. This is honestly not even an 85 overall. He's a 99 first year. Has to be. He's going to be. Next pick, I'm taking Kadarius Stewart out of UCLA, sticking with the colleges in California theme. A minus hit power, B plus block shed, B finesse move. He could play right end. He could play outside linebacker for me. Here he is, 81 overall. He's ranked number two in the class. We took him at number two. I'm sensing a theme. 87 speed, 88 block. <laughs> like these are not real players. Like these are not real picks. These are unreal. They're so good. Now, we don't necessarily need a defensive tackle, but Lester Mathis is also unbelievable out of Georgia. B-plus block shed, B-pursuit, B-minus hit power. Really, really strong. Put up 36 reps at 225. Here he is. 82 overall. <laughs> He's ranked number six in the class. We took him at number three. 90 strength, 77 tackle, 86 block shed, 79 power move, 80 acceleration, 70 speed. Another absolute beast. This draft is going, I would say, pretty well. With all that rebuilding, I really worked up an appetite, so I figured between uh, the third and sixth picks, I should probably have dinner. Good a time as any to have it, and my player got drafted at number four, which was not exactly ideal, but uh, we can still come back from this with a few other players I want. With this trade, I am trading the sixth overall pick, the ninth overall pick. Again, jokes to be made here. We're not going to attack that. And Shredrick Leach for... Something Reed from the Rams. He was a rookie last year, I guess, and the Rams drafted a stud. He's a 91 overall. He's our new starting middle linebacker. And uh, now we're in search of a defensive tackle, which I think we'll be able to find. Our defensive tackle of the future is going to be Sherwin Flowers out of USC to pair with his quarterback teammate. Good top three skills. B power move, B block shed. I mean, that's what you're looking for. And then he's incredibly fast, very agile. You'd like him to be a bit stronger, but he's going to be a sheer pass rushing beast defensive tackle. Ranked number 26 in the class, we take him at 13. 79 strength is low, but 81 tackle, 84 block shed, 84 power move. He's pretty much a beast on the defensive line. He's going to match the overall of our last defensive tackle, but we used uh, that last defensive tackle along with a couple of picks to get a really, really good looking defense, excuse me, uh, middle linebacker. So there we go. My next pick is going to be Jamal Mickens out of Wisconsin. Really good looking outside linebacker. He's a bit older at 24, but that doesn't matter really at all because uh, his top three skills are solid. B plus block shedding and tackling, B minus pursuit. He is pretty quick at 471 speed. That's not going to be high 80s, but that should be at least in the, in the low 80s. 83, 84, I wouldn't mind. Really quick, very, very strong as well. 32 reps of uh, 225. So here we go. Jamal Mickens, 80 overall, superstar development, and he has 84 speed. Number 18 in the class, we take him at 17, 84 speed, 87 tackle, 88 block shed, 77 hit power, 78 play wreck is super high coming out of the draft, 81 pursuit, very, very good player here at number 17. My next pick, I'm taking Brendan Walker, another Wisconsin player. You just keep taking players from the same colleges as we've already taken. Hold on, let me, let me, let me confirm that. Um, that's my draft board, whatever. You guys see it now. Drafted, we have USC. We have USC, we have Wisconsin. Now we're gonna take another Wisconsin. 
So let's go ahead and take him. Is he not on my draft board? I, there he is. Brendan Walker out of Wisconsin. 427 speed. That's so fast. His top three skills are also good. He's going to be a great fourth receiver. 78 overall, ranked number 16 in the class. Please take him at 18. 97 speed, 79 route running, 84 catching, 90 acceleration is kind of low. Uh, but 83 spectacular catch, 92 jumping. Really, really good looking player. Awesome fourth option there. Awesome return man as well. So fast. How about a good new running back? Gordon Winslow and a first round pick for Le'Veon Bell of the Pittsburgh Steelers. We're taking a really good quarterback, but we drafted a better one. I know it was kind of... Uh, a little weird to draft a quarterback given our current situation, but I couldn't pass up the one that we got. 85 overall superstar development, if I recall. This is a really good trade for us as well. Le'Veon Bell, I think, is the best running back in the NFL, and this is a 99 overall, adding to our 99 overall players list. Things are looking really, really good for this Cleveland Browns team. With this trade, I'm trading my free safety Sanchez Parmalee, a 2 and a 3 for Travis Kelsey of the Kansas City Chiefs. 99 overall. He's an upgrade over Gerald Everett. We, you know, also have two tight ends that are going to be in the field at some time. So to have a group of tight ends now that are absolutely insane in Gerald Everett and Travis Kelsey, that's a killer combo. And now in the second round, I'm taking my last pick, and that is going to be Barry Bruce out of Clemson. He looks okay. Uh, I don't think he's going to be all that good. I plan on trading him probably if he's good enough overall. 77 overall, ranked number 29 in the class. We take him at 45. Low speed at 86, 78 zone, 88 hit power. He's a pretty good player. Um, and I think an upgrade over our current free safety. Uh, but not, you know, not anything special. Those are all the picks that we have. We've turned a lot of our picks, and now you guys see why I wanted so many of them, into, I think, a really, really formidable team. This team should be insane for year number three. I love these fullbacks that go undrafted. Branch Sentef. 84 overall, new starting fullback. Yes, please. Marshawn's a decent shout. However, I'm going to go into... Actually, let's sign TJ Yeldon. He'll be a decent third. We could trade him if I wanted to, but I'm going to go to quarterback, and we're going to get Smokin' Jay on the team. Backup QB. So I've done a few things, which is made Kadarius Stewart a right end, where he is an 84 overall. Not too bad. I moved Jordan Mickens to right outside linebacker, where he's dropped to a 79. I think that's probably scheme fit. Um, so I'm going to change that to probably cover two. And then we're still in need of a left outside linebacker, and I, get, I suppose a backup middle linebacker, and a free safety. Cornerbacks are looking really nice, other than, I guess, um, I don't even know what his first name is, Walter Turner. I actually did know that. Interesting. Um, obviously, a made-up player. I can't be asked to remember his name. But I can trade this drafted rookie Sherwin Flowers out of USC, uh, unless he looks better than Mathis. Mathis looks pretty damn good. Sherwin Flowers. He just doesn't have the uh, intangibles that Mathis has. So we're going to probably trade Sherwin Flowers for either an outside linebacker or free safety. I think free safety is a more important position. I'm also going to check free agency and uh, maybe I'll trade TJ Yeldon or somebody for a uh, for one of those defensive positions we need. With this trade, I am trading Defensive tackle Flowers, I think it's Sherwin Flowers, as well as two second round picks, one next year for Darius Slay. I didn't expect that to happen either, but I saw the opportunity and I kind of had to jump at that because that's, uh, that's going to complete our secondary at the cornerback position as Waddy's going to slide into the slot. I think that's a perfect fit. Uh, Knight can play the slot too. I think he has pretty good press. So we have a really, really good group of cornerbacks and Darius Slay actually came with a bunch of uh, XP as well. So we'll be able to get his own coverage up. We're still... Needing a free safety and an outside linebacker. We also, you know, it wouldn't hurt to get a middle linebacker in there as well. The problem is, at this point, I don't necessarily have the trade value. Oh, actually, I have Pettigrew. Okay, Pettigrew is going to have some value. We're going to look to trade him and Barry Bruce for a safety. Or a linebacker, I guess. With this trade, I'm trading Barry Bruce, Jamie Collins, who's a 12 overall, trying to ditch some of that salary cap hit and a first round pick for Dante Hightower and a fifth next year. That was the best I could do. Dante Hightower is 28 or 29 in this current year. It's 2019. Um, so he's going to be a really good option to come in at outside linebacker. 29 years old, not that old yet. Regression probably will start hitting him pretty soon. So we got to take advantage of this team while we still have it. But a lot of other players are developing alongside him. So 
we'll see what we do with him. I probably should have gotten somebody a bit younger, but based on the interest of teams and Barry Bruce, that was the best I could do. I still need a free safety. I haven't traded Raymond Pettigrew. That's next. I'll pretty much take whatever I can get at this point. Actually, the way I'm going to do it is um, see if I can't get XP for Raymond Pettigrew from preseason. So I'm going to simulate to the regular season, see what his XP situation is, upgrade him, uh, and then trade him once he's a higher overall, which maybe he'll jump one or two. That's, that's pretty much my hope. So we have 1,400 XP. I can spend that on Play Rec. That gets him up one. That should help increase value on him to other teams. I'm hoping it does. Um, I wonder actually what his overall is at outside linebacker. It, well, he's not going to help for me because he's in a different scheme. But let's see if I can trade him away. All right, so I moved Raymond Pettigrew back to outside linebacker. I'm trading a 1 and a 3 to get Jermorier Smith. I knew once I added the 3, it would go through. He's an 85 overall. I don't know what his development is. I probably should have checked, but I assumed if he's a rookie or someone who was drafted last year. Uh, he was drafted last year. He has quick development, 92 speed, 84 zone, 87 hit power. I figured if he was 23 years old um, and it was an 85 overall, he's probably going to be decent. So Jermorier Smith it is, and the team is really starting to come together. I'm going to go ahead and sign a middle linebacker out of free agency. And I think this team is starting to look really, really solid. Oscar Brennan, 88 speed as a rookie out of TCU. Welcome to the team, Oscar Brennan, special teams monster. I'm in. This is the team, though, and already Borland has a ton of XP. Um, what is that? Is that player of the week, maybe? That could be... Um, I don't even know. Well, you see how it's happening. Decent amount of XP. We got a decent team. This team looks really solid, aside from the 12 overalls that are kind of screwed about here. Rod Johnson, Joe Batonio is in there. Kelvin Beecham. But I can't cut them for salary cap reasons. So yet Larry Larry, Joby, Emmanuel Agba, um, all 12 overalls. But it is a really good-looking team. It came together very, very nicely. We're going to use some of this XP and... Um, Let's see what overall we are. Because, uh, I mean, yeah, this team's coming together. We're an 82 overall listed, but it feels like it's higher than that. After this season, which is the third season, we're going to have a lot of other players uh, getting upgraded and getting developed. So this team has so much potential, I feel, right now. This is the team fully ready and raring to go. Defensively, I think we're looking pretty nice. It's all about a lot of these players developing. Hey, you look at Kadarius Stewart. He's a rookie, and he's already an 86 overall. When you move around these players' positions, I mean, they often can skyrocket in overall, which is cool. We got a really good team, uh, led by a stud rookie quarterback in Brian Borland. Spells it with a Y. Mm, no, I don't like that. I'm going to change that. <laughs> there we go. That's more like it. Brian with an I. Spell it right. I don't care if, if you're out there and you spell it with a Y. You spelled it wrong. See you at the midseason mark. Hopefully we have about five wins. I think would be a good mark, good benchmark for season number three. I will gladly take a six and one. Who is our top free agent? Who is this? Zach Sanchez. We have a bunch of 12 overalls in here. There we go. Finally clearing some of that cap. Obviously, um, Miles Garrett is on a longer term deal. So he's not going to be able to clear it away for a little while. But I think we're in a really, really good spot. There's a ton of XP to go around here. I'm loving it. We're 6-1 and one in a really awesome position. We don't have to re-sign anybody defensively. I mean, we're looking nice. Looking really nice. All right, coming up on the playoffs here, I have every intention of making the playoffs. Starting out 6-1, and one, you probably should. And we are going to get a first round bye. I love it. 15-1 and one here in year number three. That is awesome to show that I didn't cheat. Not that it matters. I didn't. It says force win. None, 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 none. There's always someone that says, oh, you didn't win. It's a bye week. It says that by default every time. Hold your horses there, fella. Let's go ahead and check out the stats for year number three. Rookie Brian Borland. 4,500 yards, 39 touchdowns, 15 picks. Rushing. Le'Veon Bell killed it. Almost 1,700 yards, 18 touchdowns, did not put the ball on the ground once. 52 broken tackles. Tariq Cohen, 539 yards and 15 touchdowns as a backup. Receiving Devontae Parker led our team in catches. 
940 yards for him, nine touchdowns. Odell, 1,300 yards, nine touchdowns. Five touchdowns for Mike Williams and nearly 1,000 yards. Seven touchdowns for Travis Kelsey. Seven receiving touchdowns for Le'Veon Bell. Gerald Everett even had a touchdown. He only had four catches. I might want to trade him then. Blocking, offensive line did very well. Defensively, Clayton Reed led her team in tackles with 124. Tackles for loss would be 21 from Khalil Mack. Quarterback sacks, 19 from Khalil Mack. 17 from rookie Kadarius Stewart. 5.5 from Lester Mathis and 2.5 from Miles Frampton. Interceptions, 3 from Clayton Reed, 3 from Howard Knight and Darius Slay. All led the team. Force fumbles, we have 2 from a litany of players. Hightower, Frampton, and Mack. Fumble recoveries, I saw 2 from Dante Hightower. And show me a defensive touchdown, just for shits and giggles. Nope. Show me awards. MVP is Le'Veon Bell. As a rookie, Brian Borland finishes in fourth. That's what I like to see. AFC Offensive Player of the Year goes to Le'Veon Bell. Brian Borland at third. Defensive Player of the Year, Khalil Mack. I love it. Clayton Reed in there at number nine. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Brian Borland. Had to. It really did. Brendan Walker at number eight. That receiver and defensive rookie of the year does not go to anyone i wanted brenton hampton i couldn't draft him Kadarius stewart with 17 sacks at number two very interesting jamal mickens at five lester mathis at eight 62k xp for brian borland we have xp all over the place too looks like kalan richardson made a pro bowl and he got quick development because of it awesome did you make a pro bowl you have quick development yeah you made a second pro bowl Damn, we are killing it all over the place. 32k XP for Walker. I love to see that. Defensively, um, I don't see any crazy amount of XP. 23k for Kadarius Stewart. He's playing up to a 90. We haven't even upgraded him yet. So we're going to go to the divisional championship. Divisional round of the playoffs. Upgrade our players and then face the 7-8-1 Kansas City Chiefs at home in Cleveland. So this is the fully upgraded team and it looks unbelievable. Uh, Walker was an 86 overall moments ago. I don't know why he's playing it. Oh, you know what it is? Because uh, he is not a um, red zone threat, and that's what I've changed the scheme to. Let me go ahead and change that to speed, and his overall should go back up to an 86. Yep, he is back to an 86. Mike Williams is actually wide receiver for number four now. That Walker in his rookie season has gotten so much XP for making the Pro Bowl. Um, I've upgraded him a ton. That XP was critical. The offensive line looks unbelievable. Kalan Richardson's playing up to a 90. So is Sanchez Reynolds. T uh, tight ends are really good. Defensively, though, that's where we're really having an absolute blast. Kadarius Stewart is playing up to a 93 in his rookie year. Uh, Mathis is not all that good. Uh, but, I mean, like, look at everyone just absolutely killing it. Got Reed playing up to a 95. But not to mention quarterback Brian Borland out of USC playing up to a 97 overall. We could win the Super Bowl in year number three. In the divisional, do we beat the Kansas City Chiefs and move on to the conference championship? We do. And that conference championship is against the 10 and 6 Jacksonville Jaguars. That's an offensive player of the week for Brian Borland. Clearly, he had a really good game. He had five passing touchdowns. Oh boy. Five passing touchdowns, 270 yards. I love it. Let's go ahead and upgrade him with his six point. Was it 8K? 6.8K XP. We'll do that on um, medium accuracy up to a 94. Still playing up to a 97, but we you know, took a stat that was getting upgraded already. Uh, I, I don't know where else I would have spent it. Play action, maybe? Nah, not going to do that. But we're here in the conference championship. Can we advance to the Super Bowl to face whomever in the NFC? And we do. The 15-1 Cleveland Browns will face the 12-4 Green Bay Packers. And I don't think we had a player win offensive player of the week. Did we have someone on the defense side of the ball do it? Um, Reed, maybe. Clayton Reed. Did he do it? Yep, defensive player of the week. He'll get some XP. But we are in the Super Bowl here in year number three. Certainly did not take us a decade. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and upgrade our players via this tool. Spend team XP. And see you guys for the Super Bowl. All right, so now our overall is showing a 94 to face the Green Bay Packers, I assume, led by Aaron Rodgers, who are 12-4, and 4, 92 overall. Should be a good one. Right, here we go in Super Sim, simulating to the end of the game as 
straight off the bat. I don't know who's who. We're going to take a 7-0 lead. Green Bay answers very quickly, but so do we, scoring another touchdown after a Green Bay field goal. It is now 14-10 Cleveland, making it now 21-10 Cleveland. 24-10 after a field goal. Green Bay is driving back down the field, though, and they will capitalize with a touchdown. We will not stop scoring points. 31-17 is your final score here. In year number three, we have won the Super Bowl, starting off with a zero overall team. However, fear not. There's more rebuild action to come as we're going to go and try and repeat as some of these players are going to progress even more. That orange confetti coming down looks quite nice, I got to say. Did they finally fix Super Bowl MVP? I wonder. Yeah, Super Bowl MVP, one tackle, and that's it. <laughs> that's what some of these have been. I don't know if you guys watch a lot of these, but... The Super Bowl MVP, a lot of the time, does absolutely nothing. And then you'll see like the quarterback throw for six touchdowns, like 500 yards, and not get MVP. Travis Kelsey, four catches, 31 yards, and a touchdown. It's your Super Bowl MVP. Like I can guarantee you Brian Borland, our quarterback, put in a better shift than that through four quarters. Um, but let's go ahead and see us ro uh, raise a trophy, please. That's what I'm looking for. Please. There we go. Le'Veon Bell. Rookie quarterback Brian Boyle. What is going on with his eyelids? That was scary as fuck. Odell Beckham Jr., though. Clayton Reed, our middle linebacker. That's a group of players right there. Brian Borland, the rookie quarterback, hoists the Lombardi Trophy. And the Cleveland Browns are finally Super Bowl champions. I feel you, Brian. Yeah, Brian Borland, 268 yards and four touchdowns. 23 for 30. We'll give the MVP to Travis Kelsey. We wouldn't have won it without him. In fact, if you take away Travis Kelsey's touchdown, we still win the game. Just saying. Yep, 94 overall, 99 offense, 99 defense. Pretty good team. Now it's about working with special teams. And uh, who's our kicker and punter? We got Cody Parkey and um, Michael Pilardi. All right. Well, we need better ones. Who are our top free agents? Is it anyone of any relevance at all? Branch Sentef, our fullback. But other than that, I don't need TJ Yeldon. Nah, we're going to resign Branch Sentef to a pretty big deal. We're not going to pay him that much. So, any resigns. So, that is good to see. As fullbacks, I guess, they, they don't really matter, but whatever. We got one. In free agency, where can we improve? A good defensive tackle would do wonders. Um, Drew Brees is here. That's funny. I also could use a backup middle linebacker and a fourth corner because I don't I don't really have any picks. I don't need any. Uh, Rashawn Melvin could be interesting. Tremaine Johnson. I'll take Quandre Diggs. Hook him horns. I don't really want any of the kicker or punters. So um, kicker is just not looking that good. I'm going to go ahead and trade for some kickers slash punters. Just, well, we need only one from each position. As Quandre Diggs rejected, Alec Ogletree accepted. So we're still in need of a fourth cornerback. I guess Walter Turner isn't too bad. He's not actually that bad at all. I can end up just signing a random uh, random cornerback number five. Because uh, Walter Turner, I think, is a pretty decent option. This team looks absolutely incredible now. XP is only continuing to flow in. I don't even know what draft picks I have, and I'm not even sure that I need any. Because what, like, what would I take? I have a 6th and a 7th round pick. Which I could probably use those to trade for a kicker or a punter. So I'm going to simulate to the draft and then trade those picks while in the draft. Where they're going to have their most value that they're ever going to have. And um, the Browns are not rebuilding. They are reloading going into the next season. That's a fact. This is a rebuild. It's turned into a reload. Chick, chick, boom, blowing the other teams away. Is that, that was gay, but whatever. A future three is going to get me one of the best kickers in NFL history, the best kicker in the league, Justin Tucker. Hook him horns. Third round pick next year, of course, gets that done as we have the best active kicker. And now I can trade my six and a seventh. I tried to trade a six and a seven for Justin Tucker. It did not go through. Now I can just find the best overall punter, which I don't even know who that would be. Johnny Hecker, maybe. Fourth round pick get me Johnny Hecker, though. There we go. This is the team for season number three, everyone fully upgraded. I think Walker makes more sense in the slot. And does he have quick development now? No, nah, he doesn't. That's unfortunate. But the team looks absolutely so, so sick and so good. 
I'm expecting big things. I wish, I wish uh, Lester Mathis was better, but he isn't. So that's that's where we are. That's the situation. He's a B where we have an A everywhere else except for B plus at a wide receiver three. How is that an A minus? He's an 87. I have no idea. I guess A minus is an 87. A6, or should be 86 is a B plus. Whatever Madden does on here. We're going to simulate straight to the playoffs. I expect, not undefeated, but I expect at least a 12 win season. And we're going to go ahead and upgrade it at the end of the season. Should have a ton of XP. Hopefully more players make Pro Bowls, get more XP so we can upgrade them even more. This is a really sick team and we've assembled it. This is our fourth season after winning the Super Bowl in season three, obviously. And uh, I'm not gonna keep comparing myself to my pal RBT, but like, what were you doing that it took you till 2026? I don't know, bud. So we've made another first round buy at 14 and two. Also have a decent amount of coach XP. I'm not even really sure what I can spend it on at this point. I'll go um, quarterback training boost. There we go. Don't really need it, he's already just so good. Let's go ahead and check out the stats, though. See who did what as my Coke bottle falls. Uh, 4,686 yards for Brian Borland. 47 touchdowns, 14 interceptions rushing. Le'Veon Bell, nearly 1,800 yards, 19 touchdowns. 314 carries. He did not fumble the ball once. Again, broke 52 tackles. Tariq Cohen, pretty good season as well. 600 yards and 11 touchdowns. Receiving Odell. Oh, my God. 1,400 yards on 105 catches for 17 touchdowns. 900 yards and 8 touchdowns for Devontae Parker. 1,000 yards and 7 touchdowns for Brennan Walker in the slot. Travis Kelsey had two, uh, 5 touchdowns, 755 yards. 5 touchdowns receiving for Le'Veon Bell. 2 touchdowns for Mike Williams on 5 catches. Tariq Cohen did pretty well. Gerald Everett had another touchdown catch. Blocking. Uh, how do we do on sacks? Very, very good from the offensive line. Defensively. Clayton Reed led her team with 153 tackles. Tackles for loss would be 16 from Khalil Mack. Quarterback sacks 16 from Kadarius Stewart. 13 and a half for Khalil Mack. Nine and a half for Lester Mathis. Three for Miles Frampton. But look at Kadarius Stewart though. In his career, he has back-to-back -back seasons of 15 plus sacks. 16 and 17 respectively. Like that's absolutely insane. 33 sacks over two years. Like... You're going absolutely insane, Clayton Reed. Like, I don't even know if you can handle that. Who had seven picks? Landon Collins had seven picks. Five for Jamorie Smith. Our safeties are playing awesome. Four for Big Play Slay. Three for Howard Knight. And Sterling Waddy. Two for Clayton Reed. Forced fumbles. How did we do? Two for Clayton Reed led the team. He also had two recoveries, which also led the team. Show me at least one defensive touchdown. We get zero. I mean, it doesn't matter. We were first in the NFL in offensive yards. Were we first for holding teams to defensive yards? Does it not count that? I actually kind of want to check this. Defensively, we were also first. Yeah, I mean, this is a sick team. 25 picks in total. 48 sacks. Is that the most? Has Oh, Bengals had 50? Good play for the Bengals. All right. Awards. Show me some awards. Matt Ryan wins MVP. Brian Borland at two. Le'Veon Bell at three. That's killer. All right. Well, I mean, I'm not even mad. It doesn't matter. AFC Offensive Player of the Year goes to Le'Veon Bell. Brian Borland at number two. No other Browns. Offense, or excuse me, defense player of the year goes to Clayton Reed. There we go. Kadarius Stewart at six. Khalil Mack at eight. Lennon Collins at nine. Offensive rookie of the year, Cortez Graham. I mean, we didn't draft anyone, so we shouldn't have anyone in here, and we won't. But awesome performance again from the boys. How'd you guys do in terms of gathering XP? Oh, only amazingly. 39K for Brennan Walker. The second Pro Bowl. Still normal development. Brian Borland has a just ridiculous amount of XP after winning QB of the year and making his second Pro Bowl. Uh, yeah, it's, it's XP all over the place again. Defensively, 36K for Clayton Reed after his uh, his defensive player of the year appearance or performance. His first Pro Bowl NFL tackles leader. Yeah, we just have XP out the ass pretty much. I'm going to spend it and then see you guys for the playoffs. Imagine we get first round eliminated. It's probably going to happen. So this is the upgraded team, and oh my, is it uh, pretty scary, I would say, for the opposition. Walker's playing up to a 92. Le'Veon Bell is obviously 99 overall. Borland is up to a 99. Travis Kelsey, 99. Zach Martin, 99. Forrest Lambs at a 98. Kalan Richardson, 96. David DeCastro, 96. 
We have, I forget his name again, Sanchez. Well, I'm not coming up with Sanchez. Sanchez Reynolds at a 94. Um, defensively, of course, we have Jamorie Smith at a 91. Landon Collins, 99. Dante Hightower, 91. Clayton Reed, 99. Mickens up to an 89. Um, Kluwa Mack, 99. Kadarius Stewart's up to a 96. This team is unstoppable. Mathis is an 88. Why is it showing 86? I don't know. Uh, Wadi is an 89 overall. Like This team is unbelievable. And we haven't even advanced to the divisional round of the playoffs yet. As we face the 9-7 and seven Buffalo Bills, we obviously are not going to get any more XP to use because we didn't play a game just there. But here we go. To advance the conference championship, can we beat the Buffalo Bills? We do. And again, we will face the Jaguars in the conference championship. This time they are 11-5. and five. This time the Jags might mean a little bit more business than they meant last time. But now to advance to the Super Bowl... And we beat the Jags to face the Packers in back-to-back -back Super Bowls. More XP to spend. I mean, I don't even know how you make some of these guys better. Like, you just can't. It's not possible for some of them. They're already a 99 overall. But this is the complete and fully upgraded team to heading into the Super Bowl. And, uh, yeah, it's it's not even fair, I feel. Uh, it's just so good. Forrest Lamps finally playing up to a 99. Kalan Richardson, 97. I mean, you guys can see, I'm not going to read out every single overall, but, you know, needless to say, it's an insane team. Justin Tucker, Johnny Hecker, pretty much the same overall as when we got them. Justin Tucker's up one. But here we go. I'm not even going to bother um, jumping in. Actually, no, we'll jump in. Why not? Still only a 96. Okay, I know we were a 93 or 94 last time, but you, you'd think this would be up to like a 99 now with the new additions at kicker and punter, but I suppose not. All right, in the Super Bowl, going up to a quick 14-0 lead for Green Bay answers with a touchdown of their own. Now 21-7. Can we just play some defense, get the ball back? There we go. 24-7, 31-7 as we are putting up, just pouring it on now at this point, putting up points on the Packers, 41-7. And uh, the final score will be, in fact, 41-7 as we repeat, this time in our away jerseys, as once again the orange confetti falls. Packers and Aaron Rodgers are stunned as we don't let Aaron Rodgers win back-to-back -back Super Bowls. The Browns are victorious in year number three and year number four, and that's where I'm going to call it. So um, needless to say, if it was a competition, RBT did not win. And um, maybe we'll get his opinion on that. Let me FaceTime him. All right, RBT, I guess, is busy. I'm not just going to let it ring forever. But uh, yeah, needless to say, we are once again... Super Bowl champions as Borland holds up and hoists that Lombardi trophy. I think this was pretty successful on the hardest rebuild ever. And it was it was pretty hard, to be fair. Starting out with the zero overall team with the 12 overall players at every single position, hurting my cap room was really annoying. But we got the job done. And um, yeah, of course, 99 overall offense. 99 overall defense. This is a sick team as well. One of the best teams I've ever built. When you have a million draft picks every year, I guess it's going to turn out that way. But um, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Hit subscribe if you're new. I don't ask for likes. Take it easy. This shit don't run away.